camping, you disappear into the landscape and uh, it just feels really good. At the end of a long day, we look for a place to camp for the night. I mean, something like this. Yeah. There's no designated campsites. You go where you want. Well, let's go this way a little bit then. We look for a site with good visibility in all directions. We want to see wildlife approaching well in advance. This kind of area isn't looking too bad, eh? We come across an open gravel bar with all the features of a good campsite. Do we have the map? We can check. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can like, see it parallels the river. This looks like a pretty great campsite because it's flat, it's nice hard gravel so we won't have to destroy any vegetation to camp here. There's good water right nearby and there's great visibility. Yeah, there's a lot of good spots. We consider the layout of our camp before we set up. Camping in this area, the water is back there so we can cook back there too and then we can store bear cans back upstream. Our site is well over a half mile away from the road and out of view of the road. Visible from the road. Yeah. We don't see any signs of prior human use, and the surface yeah, of the ground is hard and durable, so we shouldn't cause any lasting damage. Most of whatever incidental impacts you're going to have on the landscape are going to happen in the location where you camp. It's like, wow, it really is up to me to make sure that I'm doing the least impactful thing, because Nobody's telling me where to camp, where to wash my dishes, where to put my food, or anything. We plan separate areas for the tents, the cook site, and the bear cans, all within sight and at least 100 yards away from each other. The 100 yard golden triangle, you have your tent, and then at least 100 yards away. And if you count it out, that's really, really far. You'd be surprised. You cook and eat your food and brush your teeth. And then at least 100 yards away from both of those places is where you store your bear camp. It's about 100 yards. And then are we going to cook further back that way? Yeah, or are you do it in a line? The whole goal is to avoid bears associating people, tents, backpacks, bear cans with food. Bears are really curious animals. They're constantly in search of food. As soon as a bear gets some food from one tent, it's gonna check out every tent it sees for the rest of its life, because it knows, they're smart. They're like, well that happened once, it might happen again. So every tent I see, I'm gonna check it out because it was delicious last time. Your actions can change the behavior of these animals drastically. So it's so important to respect the fact that you are just merely passing through. We're gonna cook dinner. We all head over to the cook site to prepare dinner. Our cook site has a clear line of sight in all directions. We have to be especially alert while cooking. Bears have great noses and will be curious about interesting smells. You know, it's like, I'm safe, I'm at home, I'm cooking, what could be better? But. You're still out there, you're still in the home of all these other wild animals. We take out only the food that we'll need, keeping Ziploc bags and the bear cans close by so that if an animal approaches, we can quickly seal the food in a plastic bag and get it back into the container. We eat our dinner at the cook site, well away from our tents. After dinner, we clean up the cook site. As everyone knows, really good cheese sauce. If we do have extra scraps of food, we put them into a waste bag that we lock in the bear can and take with us when we leave. The one that's not filled with beans and rice. We move away from the stream to do our scrubbing. We want to avoid attracting wildlife and contaminating the streams. A little bit. We don't use soap since we really don't need it, and we disperse the gray water widely. Quick flick. I think. So I think some people do like a wide sprinkle, but I like a quick flick. Like this. I just get some rocks in there. 
Knowing we have an early morning ahead of us, we're ready to call it a night. You definitely want to brush your teeth at your cook site, because when you spit that stuff out, that's extra smells, and you want it to be at your cook site, not around your tent. The best method for spitting out your toothpaste is to really aerate it. Try to make it as, as much of a mist as possible. The best toothbrush performance of my life. We make sure all of our food and any scented items are stored in the bear cans. We place the bear cans at their designated location at least 100 yards from the tents, along with pots, pans, fuel, and the cook stove. Is my sunscreen in there? My hand sanitizer, is that still in my pack? It's not with my food, but all that stuff has to be collected up and put in the bear can. Before I go to bed, there's one last thing to take care of. In the back country, proper disposal of human waste is very important. Oh, for good organic soil. Make sure you are at least 100 feet away from a water source. And so I always take the top off and preserve it. Dig a hole six to eight inches deep. And you want to dig it into organic soil so it biodegrades. When finished, replace the cover soil and vegetation to leave no trace for future hikers or inquisitive animals. Like it never even happened. Pack out all toilet paper and feminine hygiene products. There was one trip where I actually spent 48 hours wishing in my head, please stop raining, please just stop raining, please just stop raining, and it didn't. We have a lot of ground to cover today, and we want to get an early start. It started raining at like 4.30, 5 o'clock yesterday. Shaking off the last bits of sleep, we start packing up. In the morning it's like, okay, we're doing this. You will be dry again someday, you will be warm again. When cleaning up camp, we challenge ourselves to leave as little trace of our campsite as possible. We pack out all our garbage and make sure not a single sign of our stay is left behind. Ghosting away. It's like you were never there. It's like you just kind of kiss the land that night and then you're on your way. We set off for a new adventure and a new day. Seven years ago when I first started camping was like, oh man, like, I'm so tiny, this is so big. And now you still feel small, of course. But now it's more like, oh, I'm being swallowed up into this. Like, I'm disappearing into this. And that is so good. <laughs> <laughs>